right out of the woods, Tarpon Woods. We're in a very intriguing area of Florida on the west coast near Clearwater, Palm Harbor, Tarpon Springs, and all of this beauty brings a golf course that has amazing history dating back to 1974. The best part of the history is the newest chapter under new ownership, a renaissance that is restoring it to its early luster when it was a playground for some of the great names in sports and in golf. In fact, you never know who you're going to see here. Good day, mates. Come and see us. Jan Stevenson, one of the new owners here at Tarpon Woods. How could you resist that kind of invitation right along with us on this newest episode of The Traveling Golfer? To survive the perils of history and time, a brewery needs to hold true to the values it was founded on. Yingling, America's oldest brewery, began brewing lager close to two centuries ago. We're still here today because we made a damn good beer that tastes the way beer is supposed to. Yingling, traditional lager. Respect, it's earned. Playing number two, par four dog leg right at Tarpon Woods. We may be in Florida, but it reminds me of a great golf course in South Carolina, Harbor Town on Hilton Head Island, tight fairways, beautiful live oak trees, hanging Spanish moss, small greens, a little bit pushed up. A lot of those characteristics. Do you get that feel also? Yeah, you're right. I hadn't thought about that because that's one of my favorites, this Harbor Town. And, and you know, the same thing, the same characteristic that it has besides the beauty is that this hole, number two, is, it goes left to right. The next hole we will play will go right to left. So it's not all in one direction, which I think is why so many people like it. They often call Harbor Town a shot maker's course. I'd say same thing here. Absolutely. I mean, this hole is only 315 yards and we've hit perfect drives right here, but if you don't, you can't even get to the green because of the trees. Yeah, as we said, that it, it's not just a matter of hitting the fairway, it's hitting the proper quadrant of the fairway. <laughs> That's true. Uh, so that you can get that good angle into the green. Another thing I like is that the bunkering is uh, not too penal. Uh, they're not enormous, they're not hard to get in and out of, uh, but yet they still guard the greens. Well, that's what I like about it. You know, sometimes bunkers have gotten a little bit carried away these days. They're too deep, you know, they're too penalizing. They should be just to test your skill, not that you can't get towards the pin. Speaking of the greens, again, like Harvard Town, not large greens at all. Not a huge amount of undulation in them. So if you do get in the right spot, even though there's some tricky portions to the greens, you got a shot at making birdie. You do, and the greens have been really kept in great shape. We've got a great superintendent, and he's worked really hard this year to get them in really good shape. And it, it is amazing, because you only sometimes you've only got a short putt, but somehow I, I still have trouble reading them. <laughs> <laughs> now, obviously with smaller greens, you're not going to hit as many greens. Chipping is a very important part of playing Tarpon Woods. Well, you know, I love that because I think I'm known for my short game. So I actually like that part of it because you get to see so many golf courses now where it's just a driving contest and you can hit it anywhere and then have a shot in. But here, not only do you have to hit a really good tee shot, you have to hit your second shot or your shot to the regulation good because otherwise you're going to miss the green and have a very tricky chip. On these tight tree-lined fairways, it's not only important wow. to hit the ball in the fairway, but hit it on the correct side of the fairway. Otherwise, the dog leg could be a big problem. Number 12, 136 yards. One of another, the beautiful par three holes at Tarpon Woods. Jan, 
I love the assortment that you give us with the par threes. Well, you know, what I really like is that they all go in a different direction because typically a lot of designers will put them in one direction because they kind of get stuck and then the prevailing wind, you have the same shot every time. Every one of our par threes goes in a different direction. So you might get a crosswind, you might get a downwind. So that changes the hole a lot. From a golfer's point of view, different yardages help a little bit too. I know you have one that's well over 200 yards that's quite a test. Yes, yes, that's that's number four. It's a very, very long hole and you know you're going to have to have a fairway wood at that one or a fairway metal. And then you come to something like this where you know you can make a birdie. And But it's tricky because you've got to go over water and then it's a, there's, a, there's a bunker placed very strategically. So it's not an easy hole even though it's short. Number 17, it's another one that I kind of want to sneak a little bit. It's got a nice long tee, so you can actually change it. So what I try to do is that every day I want to have that hole totally different. So we've got a tee that's over 40 or 50 yards long. We move the tee up and down for the white tee, so it actually changes a lot. And of course, number eight is my favorite because it's got water on the left, but it's only like really short. It's like 120, but I, I've seen more people in the water there because it's very intimidating. All right, I'm inspired. I'm going to take the Jan Stevenson challenge. Let's go at it on this hole right here. Okay. Ladies first. <laughs> I'm not going to compete against that. <laughs> the challenge is off. <laughs> I know you have some designs for Tarpon Woods down the road. The first woman ever to design a golf course and she can't get it out of her blood. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I mean, I'd love to tinker with any golf course and especially now that my foundation, the Crossroads, owns this, it's like, I can't wait. But I have to remember that because it's for disabled vets and first responders, that's what our foundation is for. I have to be very aware when I redo the bunkers and the greens and the tees that they are, they will have prosthetics and sometimes in wheelchairs. And so I've got to be really aware of that as well. They need to be accessible for everyone and that's a great thing yeah so tell me a little bit i know you don't want to tip your hand too much but some of the changes you already are starting to think about well this one for example on number two i think the water is too far away from the green so i want to make it the green go a little bit further out towards the water and then sharp down so if, if you want to go for that pin with your wedge but if you miss you're going to go down into the water so I want to make it a little bit more penalizing. A little bit of a tease there for <laughs> sure you know for us the water is far away for you for the rest of us it's too close but how about I know you're having an idea about number 18 uh, making that into a par 5. Yeah, I still, I love risk reward holes. And I think all the par fives, not just for the tour players, but for everybody, you should have a chance to be able to get there in two. But if you don't, you're gonna be penalized. So obviously you're either gonna make a four or a six. And so I'm gonna bring the green closer to the water for the, for the second shot. And that's if you can get over the water. And if not, you'll have to lay up and then try to make your birdie. So that hole's gonna be fun. So you can take the risk, <laughs> but if you make a uh, poor shot, you're going to wind up in the water. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you'll see when we play it. I'm going to see what will happen. All right. Introducing HL3, the third release in the award-winning Hot Launch series from Master Club designer David Glaude. With a complete lineup from driver to wedge, HL3 offers premium technology and top-of-the-line performance at exceptional prices. The HL3 driver features a forged titanium head and cup face technology, which maximizes the amount of face flexing for increased ball speed. The HL3's technology and advanced design do all the work in providing you extra distance off the tee. Variable face thickness technology provides more contact points on the face that deliver better performance on off-center strikes. The driver's cup face technology increases the amount of face flexing for maximum power and ball speed. For faster club head speed at impact, the driver's design incorporates a new aerodynamic shape. The design also maximizes MOI, 
for more stability at impact. A power channel on the sole behind the club face delivers amplified ball speed with less spin, as well as added forgiveness on shots struck lower on the face. A rear sole weight moves the center of gravity back deeper in the club head to create an easy launch that will fly higher and longer. Visit, Visit an authorized Tour Edge fitter today and experience the best custom fitted value in golf including our unprecedented 48-hour guaranteed delivery on custom fit orders. HL3. Get fit. Spend less. Play better. Jan, you brought me out here to number 18. A big finish. And we're all tied, so let's see if we can do a risk reward on this hole. Ay, ay, ay. I'm <laughs> leaning toward the risk. We'll see. How about it? <laughs> Jan, you hit the green with a fine birdie attempt coming up. As usual, I've got to chip it in for birdie to tie. You missed in the right place, but this is for all the tea in China. Okay, let's <laughs> give it a try. I've been beaten by the best. <laughs> At least with a <the> birdie. <laughs> it's not often that you meet somebody who was born and lived all their life in Florida. Mike Van Diver, born in St. Petersburg, moved just up the road to the Palm Harbor area, and now has established his own little kingdom here in Tarpon <laughs> Woods. It's been a fun life journey for you. It has been an interesting tour, I have to tell you. You wonder about somebody, how he got into the golf ownership business? Easy, he spent years in the music business, running around promoting people like the Charlie Daniels Band, and then an era of classic rock. A lot of classic rock folks, uh, lead singers from Journey, Toto, Deep Purple, Blue Oyster Cult, uh, this, the whole long list of people. From that, you went into club making, your company Razor Golf, and you sell a lot of the Razor Golf equipment right here at Tarpon Woods. We do. We, uh, we're the kind of a mid-low price manufacturer, so we take care of the folks that are looking for some low uh, priced products, but they're high quality. And then the opportunity in your own backyard came up to revitalize an old classic golf course. I was fortunate. I played here many, many years ago when it first opened, and it was one of the premier golf facilities in the Tampa Bay area. And to be able to play here was a real privilege. It was private, and you would never know who might be here. You would see some of the greatest Yankees here, uh, some very high roller folks, uh, some very famous people. And it was great when you come out here, and it was just a wonderful place. The Ferentinos did an absolutely magnificent job on this golf course. Well, now it's being revitalized by you and Jan Stevenson into a premier daily fee operation. Everyone that comes here, we try to book them at the Hampton Inn because the people are so friendly, they have a great hotel, and they are just, they could not be more accommodating. And it's right in the middle of everything. So close to the golf course, but so close to the other attractions. It's very close to Tarpon Springs, which is an absolutely wonderful Greek town, which has become a tourist attraction, actually, because it's so unique. No trip to the Palm Harbor would be complete without a little adventure north, just a few miles, to the very quaint town of Tarpon Springs. 
and of course, the economic hub of that town, the sponge docks. All of it immersed in Greek culture, driven by the sponge industry, which started more than a hundred years ago. Divers cultivating the bottom of these waters for live sponges. The sponge docks are a hub of activity with festivals, all of the great Greek restaurants and other attractions that make the sponge dock area so unique and so much fun. And at the end of its main street, Dos Dekanis Boulevard, is a place called Rusty Bellies, a seafood restaurant with a huge deck overlooking the water where the locals and the visitors come to watch the magnificent sunsets. We are just minutes away from the beaches. Clearwater Beach is one of the greatest beaches in the United States, uh, recognized by Condé Nast Traveler as one of the finest beaches in the U.S. We are close to Clearwater, Tampa, you've got arts, you've got golf, you have anything you could possibly want to do in this area, and the Hampton Inn is right in the middle of it. And what about baseball? You've got the Phillies spring training right down the street at Spectrum Field, but I understand there are actually nine spring training facilities within one hour of where we are right now. It's amazing. This is baseball mecca. If you're a baseball fan and you like to play golf, this is the place you need to be. Nothing like combining a little bit of baseball and golf. Golf in the morning, spring training, baseball in the afternoon. Put me in coach, I'm ready. Mike, I know that Tarpon Woods needed a rebirth. Your energy and Jan's energy and experience really seem to be turning the trick. The course is beautiful. We're very fortunate. Uh, I bring some of the talents that uh, this place needed with some management skills. Jan brings the development and the golf course renovation skills. So together we've been working very hard and I think that there is not one person that would come here that would not tell you this is some of the finest golf in the Tampa Bay area that you could play. Best way to find out more about Tarpon Woods, the website? TarponWoodsGC.com Mike Van Diver, part of the rebirth at Tarpon Woods. No visit to Tarpon Woods would be complete without a little discussion about wine. Jan Stevenson Wine, launched in 2015. How did you become the little old winemaker? <laughs> you know, I've always been interested in wine. You know, when you play on tour, we always get to travel a lot and try wines. And we actually had a, a cellar club, and we'd all bring wine. And it used to be that I didn't know anything about wine. They go, oh, well, Jan will probably bring box wine. And then I went, you know what, I went to a sommelier course and got hooked because I wanted to show that I had I understood wine anymore and then I, I now I'm really hooked. I bought a vineyard in um, in California and then I now I get to mix it with my winemaker and it's really fun. And you've got a couple different flavors for us. I've tried every one of them, surprise, <laughs> surprise. <laughs> and I love every one of them. Uh, you, you started with three. Chardonnay, I started, yes. Merlot and a cab. Correct. But then the newest one. The two newest are these two babies. This is a, a white. And you know what I was trying to do is because I love uh, Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand, I was trying to get that. And I don't, obviously, it doesn't, Sauvignon Blanc grapes don't grow in my vineyard very well for the, because of the weather. So I combined Albarino, Grenache, and Viognier and came up with a, a, it's almost between a Pinot Grigio and a Sauvignon Blanc. So I'm, this is my new favorite. And the blend, the red blend, is something brand new, four different grapes in there. It is. Now, we tried to keep it three because I, we, had, we called it three majors because I've won three U.S. majors. But I, and I started mixing with uh, the Cab Merlot and a bit of Petit Bordeaux and then started playing with the Petit Sarah and I kept adding too much and so we had to finish up being four. But as you know, I think that smoothed it out really well. Well, a little bit of golf, a little bit of wine. Jan Stevenson does it all and does it all right here at Tarpon Woods. Our visit to Tarpon Woods Golf Club in this very interesting portion of Florida 
has come to an end just way too soon. I want to thank everybody at Tarpon Woods for their hospitality. But before we leave, we can't help but take one more shot on this serene 17th hole for that dream come true hole in one, a perfect setting for that perfect shot. I can dream, can I? Tony Leodora's golf wardrobe, courtesy of Antigua, the leader in modern golf apparel. Tour Edge is the official equipment sponsor of The Traveling Golfer.